There are two ways that electrophilic addition to an alkene occurs, both of which follow the AD sub B2 pathway. In this webcast, we will cover the first variation of the AD sub B2, which involves an A sub B step followed by an A sub N step. So pi bond breaking in sigma bond formation for the A sub B step followed by sigma bond formation in the A sub N step. And this pathway for the AD sub B2 will occur when we have an electrophile that has no lone pair, for example, a proton. An example of the way that this electrophilic addition occurs is laid out for you here, showing addition of HBr to ethene. In the first step, the pi bond of ethene breaks and takes off the proton on the hydrogen bromide. To show this, I could use my two electron arrow tool, put my double bond parentheses, click once, and drag my cursor until there are parentheses around my hydrogen atom and the carbon that it adds to. Once I see this, I could click. And then to finish this, I could show my sigma bond donating its electrons to that bromine atom. And what we see now is that this A sub B step generated a carbocation intermediate. And since the carbocation has only six valence electrons, it is very reactive. And now this bromine atom can come and attack this empty A orbital on that carbocation to generate the final product we see in this box here. Now it might at first seem odd to say that this electrophile has no lone pair because the bromine atom, after all, has three lone pairs on it. But notice that the bromine atom is not acting as the electrophile. The hydrogen on that hydrogen bromide is acting as the electrophile, and then the bromine is acting as a nucleophile to attack that carbocation and generate our final product. Thus, this is an example of an electrophile that has no lone pair. We can gain a better understanding of this electrophilic addition by taking a look at the reaction coordinate diagram for this reaction. And what we can see is that the rate determining step for this reaction is indeed formation of that highly unstable carbocation intermediate. And this is illustrated by that huge uphill climb that the reactants have to go through in order to get to this carbocation intermediate. But what you'll also notice is generation of this carbocation intermediate is a necessary step in order to reach our final products. And one final note to take out of this reaction coordinate diagram is to take a look at the transition state structure for each step. We can see that while our pi bond broke, we formed a sigma bond between carbon and hydrogen and broke a sigma bond between hydrogen and bromine. And we could also see that a positive charge developed on a carbon atom and a negative charge developed on the bromine atom. Thus, even though we generated charges in our intermediate, overall charge was conserved. And then finally, in the next transition state, we see the dotted line representing the formation of the sigma bond between the carbon and bromine atom. In the previous example, we saw addition of hydrogen bromide to a symmetrical alkene, ethene. But what happens when we add hydrogen bromide to an unsymmetrical alkene, such as the one we see here? We'll learn about why the compound on the left is the major product, while the compound on the right is the minor product.